jet boat in the pool for today. So after we made the video of our newly acquired jet boat, I don't know how many comments we got about us needing to put a K-Series in this thing. A couple people were saying they were gonna unsubscribe if we didn't K-Swap this unit. And uh, you guys know us too well, yes. We're gonna try to put a K-Series in our jet boat here. And today we are going to be going to pick up the engine for this thing. And I'm going to the same exact uh, importer where we got the engine for Garza's Miata build. And we're gonna see if they have another K-Series for us to stick into the jet boat here. So she's been sitting in the pool Still got to figure out how to get this thing out. We were just so excited to get it into the pool that now it's kind of stuck in there and we got it anchored up over here to our post. Luckily, we got our unicorn floaties right here to keep it kind of in position and not get it all scratched up. We'll find a way to get this boat out of the pool another time. We're going to have to wait for the guys to come back and lift it out. But for now, I got the seats, or I guess you could call it the whole engine cover, pushed forward and I was taking some measurements. We still have some water down there from when we were splashing this thing. But I was taking some measurements to see roughly how much room we have for a K-Series. And then I measured a K-Series that we have over in the shop, just like a spare engine that's not really that well put together just for some dimensions. And it looks like we will have enough room. I'm not worried uh, from front to back. You can see this tab up there. We have about up to that tab, actually a little more room because of this hump in the uh, engine cover. It comes forward a few inches and the K-Series is gonna have to sit right here down the center. And then we do have to work in between the seats right here. So having those seats cut into the engine cover does take some of our room up for like the exhaust and intake manifold. Um, and another thing is we have a jet drive to put into this thing that is not out of a uh, jet ski. We have a really awesome unit coming in and I'm really excited to show you guys what we have in store for that, but that will be for another video. Um, I'm not sure how far back that jet drive is going to sit just yet. We did get some rough measurements but I'm thinking it's all gonna work out. Our other concern was the height of the engine and it looks like we should have a couple inches of clearance under the cover here because with a full factory oil pan on the K-Series and everything and having to be mounted up just a touch to not be resting on the bottom of the boat here, um, it is a pretty tall motor. So we took all this stuff into consideration. We're still not 100% sure if it's going to be perfect, but we're gonna do our best to make it work. And I think we got a pretty good plan on getting this thing case swapped so today we are going to be trying to find an engine for it and then from there we will be waiting on a couple more parts to come in mainly our jet drive and we will be going from there and then hopefully we can figure out how to get this thing out of the pool by the end of the day as well well guys we are back in orlando we are at the same jdm engine importer where we picked up the k-series for garza's miata and it looks like we are picking up another one here for the jet boat build uh, we are going to be taking this guy right here. This is another K24A, literally the same engine that we just put into the Miata build for Garza. I was actually going to do a newer style K-Series. I'll show you guys one over here. So this is an 08 and up K24A. And if you look at the exhaust port right here, it's all integrated and it all comes to just this one single hole right there with one flange. So making a turbo kit off of these newer style ones is very simple because all you got to do is just come right off of that straight to a turbo and it doesn't have the four individual runners like the older styles do um, but after talking to Brent and the guys the only issue with these is I guess the rods are pretty weak in these and you don't want to push them anything over like 400 horsepower even like 350 could be pushing it and we might want to be right in that range with the jet boat and I really don't want to have to put rods in it and tear the whole motor apart just to do that. I'd rather just do a stock motor, low boost, and call it a day. We were thinking about doing this style just because it might save us more room inside the engine bay, especially with those seats cut out on either side of the engine. We need to make sure we have enough room. But after some thinking, we're gonna go ahead and go with the older style that has a traditional four port header on it like all the other ones. And we're just gonna make our own custom manifold for when the time comes. But I think we will have no issues with the uh, same one that we put in the Garza's Miata. And I know those can handle a little bit more power than these. So that's the main reason we're doing it in case we ever turn the jet boat up and make like 350, 400 horsepower. But uh, yeah, they're gonna go ahead and get their forklift all hooked up and we'll have ourselves a new engine for the mini jet boat boys. I don't know if we can ever not be done with K swaps. We just love these motors so much. To the right, to the right.
Awesome. There it is, new power plant for the mini jet boat, guys. I'm excited to see if this thing will fit. And if not, looks like the CG's coming apart, but I think we're gonna make this work. Yeah, there it is. She's a beauty. I think most of the comments knew what was coming. Yeah, they did. I mean- K-swap for the jet boat. K-swap the world, right? We're gonna leave it NA at first, but it's definitely gonna get a little turp ski. Yeah, and these NA, the you know, make 200 horsepower, so they're super stout. Yeah, I'm excited. So while we were down here in Orlando, picking this thing up, stopped by Enemy Creations at their Kissimmee location, because this is where Brent and Jamie have been yep. every day working on his Civic. Yep, trying to get it all done and wrapped up. And I heard we might ride. go testing tomorrow at the track. It's the goal. So might do a little racing. I decided maybe we're gonna bring the NSX out. Oh, see what happens. Even though amazing. I promised I would not <laughs> race it. You know, that trap speed in the rolls got me curious. <laughs> yeah, it got us wanna, all curious. I wanna see what it can do. Trapping 173 is just, that's fast. Oh my gosh, dude. Cause you know, a roll trap speed is kind of what it can do quarter mile trap speed. So, yeah, it'll probably just be a couple mile an hour down from that, yeah. but it should probably be 168 to 170 range. Oh, I can't even believe it. So fast. Wow. It's one of those race car motors. I like how I said we were going to be done with K-swaps for a while, but they just keep rolling in, right? Yeah. That was definitely all you guys. <laughs> So right now Hayden is working on the roll cage in the MR2. He's getting the main hoop knocked out. It's actually already bent over there and he's just working on adding some bars to that. He had it mocked up in here and it looks really good. And before that gets put in here permanently, I'm going to start on seeing if we can get this sound detonating out of the back of the car here. I mentioned in the last video that I really did not like the look of this right here. I probably should have just left it because I didn't realize how stuck on there this stuff is. I went ahead and took a center punch and center punched all of these spot welds right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and drill out all of those. And then it's just going to be a matter of prying this stuff off the back of the car here and then probably use a wire wheel or something to get this stuff off. It is on there good. There's spots where I've tried to wire wheel it like here and over there and it sucks to get off of there. But I'd really like to get as much off as possible and then just make the back of the car look nice because that's been bothering me for a long time. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get that ripped off of there. All right, I just got those pieces of metal ripped out of the back here, the MR2, but we're still gonna have to get rid of all of the sound deadening material right here, and it is on there good. Uh, when we took the top section off, I could kind of scrape some of it off with a pry bar, but it doesn't work that great. I think the best option is to honestly just wire wheel it on like an angle grinder. It's gonna get really messy, but uh, we'll probably start on that tomorrow. We spent most of the day picking up the engine for the jet boat, but that alone right there was a lot of work, but those are out of the way and they were actually pretty heavy, so save a good amount of weight since we're adding all this weight in the new cage. But yeah, got those guys off right there. You guys got it? So, Brent, just keep the back. You guys gotta swing the back to around. Watch your feet slow down. That just showed you the other day why it was really holding it all. <laughs> okay. Perfect. All right, boys, we got the jet boat back out of the pool. It was fun while it lasted. Yep. Don't know if it was really worth it, but awesome freaking pool toy. No lie. I think it serves a better purpose honestly i think we need another one just to sit yeah. in the pool and we can hang out with all the it. seats in it <laughs> but as you guys saw we just went and picked up a new k24a jdm for the jet boat here and 
in the beginning of the video, I did take some measurements. But now that we got the boat out of the water, if you take into account the cutout for the seats, it's gonna be a tight fit. It's gonna be very tight. It's gonna be tight. Yeah. So we're not quite ready to get the engine into the boat yet. We're gonna wait till we get the jet drive and everything, which should be here soon-ish. Maybe next week you guys will see a video on that because this will probably be the last update video on the jet boat for a little bit till we get some more parts rolling in. But we're still gonna do our best to make a K-Series work in this thing because yeah. everyone wants to see doable. a K-Swap jet boat. It's, it's so doable. It would be so us to do it. And it's gonna be a lot of fab. Yeah, so. I think we can make it work though. Worst, worst case scenario. You know, I mentioned taking the CDU apart. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna make the K work, but worst case, we might have to modify uh, the seat stuff up here to make some more room or just get rid of the four seater entirely and just do a flat top, kind of like how Cletus's Ooh. boat is. But I really do like the four seater. So I'd like to keep it that way, but you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. Maybe we can get a second jet boat on the way if this yeah. one just has to be a dedicated K boat. Right, But like uh, something happen. Yeah, either way, got our K series and here very soon we will be getting that installed, made it to the jet drive. Yeah. And the jet drive, I'm super excited to show you guys yeah, what we have in store drive, for that. So sick. The motor, gonna be awesome. It's just slight clearance issues. We, we'll have to address those, but should be pretty cool, dude. I'm excited for this build. Yeah, like I mean, we could, going on right we could now, just but... stick a Rotex in it out of my ski, but then it'd be, you know, not as cool, I think. Right. Everyone wants to see turbo. It doesn't fit with the whole turbo K swap. Vibe, yeah, you know? we got to do it. It's not a turbo. I mentioned we had some more K swap projects coming up. One was the Miata, the we, other we was can't this. Let our first supercharger build be in a jet boat. Okay? A lot of people were saying supercharged K series would be cool. That would be cool. The Craftsworks supercharger would, would fit cool. there nicely, but then we would also possibly run into that clearance issue with the seat there. Because right now, our biggest thing is this intake is pretty far out and we need to try to fit all of this in between 16 the seats right here yeah this is 16 inches across and that's what we have to work with yeah we're a little the exhaust there. manifold super easy we can make something super tight you know it's not like we're going for a thousand horsepower but the intake manifold that's going to be one we might fight we can get that figured out then we're good but yep. like i said worst case we'll get rid of the four seater but we are going to make the k-series work yeah. at some point one way or another it's going in there one way or another that motor will push this boat forward. Don't know how fast, but it's gonna work. Yes. We'll Maybe go through we'll all that before we think about giving up on it. Yeah. But I think it will work really well if we get it all set up. Especially yep. like Tom's jet boat. I think right. sick. Especially once we get a turbo kit on there. Yeah. But this one will be cool too. I wanna like try and use the drive by wire stuff, kinda do some cool trick stuff with the boat. Be yeah. pretty sweet. That way we can just do like a little finger trigger on the steering wheel or something. Be pretty cool. All right, guys, so we got some updates on the route to see why it's been over here wiring away All the for things. a while now. We hit it hard for like a couple of weeks. You got a lot knocked out and then yep. it got pushed aside while we were working on other all things. Stuff. MR2, and, uh, NSX, freaking everything. The red MR2, all that. Red MR2. So, got the route to see pulled back in and he's finalizing some wiring yep. with like the taillights and yep. all the chassis stuff. Yep, everything's all wired. All I got to do is finalize hooking everything up to the little fuse box deal. So you guys have seen this already, but we got a little fuse box hitting up underneath the dash there. And then I've got all my wiring ran up to it. So now I just got to terminate it all there and then we'll be good to go. It's got power windows, turn signals, brake lights, the whole nine yards, so. Then once all that's done, the engine and stuff will be ready to go back in and we can start yeah. wiring in the fuel tech. Do the nice fuel tech with that big bulkhead on it. Make and it look nice and pretty. Brent's excited for that. It's gonna be yeah. big fancy. It's so. gonna be really happy to see the Routacy version whatever yeah. version this is now coming back point six <laughs> yeah i think it's like this is a solid like version three, three yeah. version three first was the h then the k all wheel drive and then now yeah. it's just refined so this one's gonna be solid version three right here should be pretty good of the route see and we finally got this in right here finally got ourselves a civic wagon diff for the van so this guy should be quite a bit stronger than the crv one and these are getting very hard to find but I tracked one down. Yep, I had to pay a premium price because yep. that's what they're going for now. And so that came sad. all the way from, Poland. forgot where, Poland? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, Poland, I believe. So out of the country, this diff comes factory in those, in the Wagos. But uh, yeah, we got one here for the van. They were built pretty tough. Yeah. And yeah. It's ridiculous. they're going to be able to buy the whole car for 800 bucks. Now the diff Dude. is double that for, for real i wish wild. If you guys watched the older videos all and all wheel drive wagos back in the day dude literally time. i have a picture and i used to own three of these at one point and i bought all of them for under a thousand dollars i bought this whole wagon for 800 and now just the diff is going for almost two thousand dollars just shy of two grand wow. 
all the all-wheel drive components added together with the diff, like the drive shaft viscous like and all grand, that. Yeah, it's like thirty-five hundred. It's so nuts. It's crazy. And I'm like, dude, literally, we would buy wagons, beat them up. You, that original video, we would just, <laughs> you know, they were just that, beaters. Like, we took it up Bud School Road in Colorado. We're like yeah. bouncing it off rocks, just beating the hell out of it. And it was awesome. It was a trooper. Who knew yeah. they had some valuable parts in them? Yeah. Guys have ran like seven second quarter miles on these diffs stock. So we should be good. We have the extra weight of the minivan. We're gonna do our best to beef it up in the future, put an LSD in it and all that good stuff. But these come factory with a bigger spline than the CRV stuff. And we've already broken a couple rear axles. So we're hoping this guy will do the trick. And also with the weight taken out of the van that yeah. we wanna do, we should hopefully yeah. be breaking less. And this just gives us so much more possibilities to do stuff with the van. Like you're saying, it takes so much more power. And, yeah, you know, we don't have yeah, to it's legit. Out it's tons of we're yeah. we're setting up the Radisey here to be basically Fast. the same as a fully built all-wheel drive Civic that's capable of running like low eights, high seven. That's what we're building, but sticking it inside of a minivan, and then our only right. factor the only is the, uh, the only yeah, disadvantage is the weight. But otherwise, yeah, the weight like, disadvantage and some suspension everything. disadvantages. Yeah. And also, we don't know how this thing is. Yeah. We don't know how aerodynamic it is either compared to a Civic. It is pretty big. It does look like a bullet. Kind of looks like a bullet train. So it actually might be pretty aerodynamic. I think it's gonna be pretty good. Yeah. But we're gonna see. That's the plan. We want this thing to go. My goal is eights one day. Yeah. I think we can do it. To see a van going down the track. Yeah. Going like 160, 70. This is gonna be the baddest Radisey out there. I mean, it already is, honestly. And it's going to be even better. Now we're just solidifying that position. Mm -hmm. That's it. If there was any Locking doubt about in. it before, it's going to be addressed now. Ooh, check it out, guys. The roll cage in the MR2 is looking so freaking good. Hayden is crushing it on this thing. He actually had to get out of here this morning. He had some family stuff come up, but he was up late last night getting this knocked out. So I appreciate him working hard on this thing. He wanted to get some more done before he got out of here. He'll be back in a couple days but he got this fitting so good. He got the extra bars here that will be going behind the driver. The 10 point roll cage does not require all these bars. It's normally just a single bar across for the harnesses, but these are some extra bars that we need. We'll also be adding the hoop that goes around me, the driver, and that looks so good in there. And yeah, obviously I still need to get all that sound deadening stuff cleaned off still. Also get a good look at the floor bars. Now that it's not attached to the car, you can kind of see that a little better. That piece came out freaking sweet. So those are two of the harder pieces to get done is all that floor stuff and that main hoop with all of those. And then adding the hoop around the driver is a little tedious as well. But Hayden has been doing an awesome job. And that is about it for today's video, boys. We got the case swap for the jet boat back over there. Getting the cage done on the MR2. The Rowdy is coming along as well. And it's looking like we might be taking the NSX to the track tonight. So the next video might be seeing how fast this can go in the quarter mile. I said I was not gonna race this car, but after seeing it trap over 170, now I'm kinda curious. Gonna do my best to uh, go easy on the launch with this thing, and I don't know what's gonna happen, but we're getting ready to load it up right now. So I think the next video you guys are gonna see is this going to the track. So I'm kind of excited, kinda nervous. I was not supposed to race this thing, but that's it for today's video, guys. See you later.